Hey there, welcome to the show. I'm Justin and today I'm showing you all of the Dexcom G7 alert settings all of the ways that I found that you can harness and customize the settings so that you have less alert fatigue and just feel more in control and less bothered by diabetes and alerts. Uh, so I'm gonna show you everything that I've been using. There's so many things here. There's quiet modes, there's the ability to set snooze alerts or multiple profiles so you have different alerts and uh, ranges for different times of the day. I also have a ton of other Dexcom content on this channel. I've shown how to overlap sensors. I've reviewed the Dexcom G7 twice, so I'll put links to those videos in the description. If you enjoy this video and want to see more coverage on Dexcom or videos like this, give this video a like and let me know in a comment what you wanna see and of course, subscribe to this channel. I've got videos coming out every Monday. It's my podcast, which is on here and on podcast platforms and videos on Fridays. Also, nothing new here today or on, in any of my videos. It's not medical advice. Always consult with a physician before making any changes to your healthcare. All right, let's jump into it. I wanna start with the first thing you're gonna see, which is the home screen. And near the graph of all the readings, there is an ellipses in the top right corner. So just tap on that. And this gives you instant functions and the ability to alter your high and low alerts. So you can use these bars to change what number you want the alerts for. You can even just turn off high and low alerts. If you turn these off, you'll still get urgent low alerts, signal loss alerts, things like that, but you won't be getting the high and low alerts when those are turned off and then you've got access to quiet modes right here. Quiet modes are one of my favorite things with Dexcom G7. I think that they've given me so much more comfortability going into Broadway shows or movies because you always have that anxiety of, am I gonna get an alert in the middle of a show and everyone's gonna hear it, I'm gonna get shamed for it. That doesn't happen anymore with these alerts. So first you've got vibrate, so when I toggle that on, that means up to six hours or indefinitely, I can have all alerts be vibrate. I typically will put this at you know two hours, two and a half hours, depending on how long the show's gonna be. So all of your alerts are going to vibrate here, but the only two, urgent lower sensor failure, these will vibrate first, but if you don't acknowledge the alert, they will then make a sound. Then you've got silence. So this one works a little bit differently. This will silence all alerts for up to six hours. I personally don't really use the silence feature. I tend to use the vibrate mode. The silence one freaks me out a little bit. Let me know if you're using the silence all in the comments and what situations you're deciding to use it in. I can think that maybe like one of the main reasons people will use it is they keep getting low alerts, they're aware that they're having a low, they have the juice with them, uh, and they're just like, I'm over it, I don't want vibrates, I don't want alerts, so I'm gonna put these on silence. That would kind of be, I guess, how I would use it if I ever decided to. One of my favorite things about Dexcom G7 is the ability to create multiple profiles for alerts. So you can set different thresholds for certain times of day, certain days that come on uh, at that time. So to do this, you're gonna go to profile, the last tab, then go to alerts. And in here, if you haven't set one up yet, you'll just have like settings here. You'll have those quiet modes on top. Then if you go all the way to the bottom, there's add second alert profile. So I'm gonna tap that. This is going to let me name it. So I actually, I had when I deleted it, I'm gonna create it again for you. It's called nighttime. So these alerts are going to activate at night when I'm going to sleep. So let me go to that now. So, th so it's opened up. So what I want is I want to have a higher threshold for uh, my glucose levels so that I don't get alerts if it's, let's say one up to 190. Uh, or even 200 because I'm I'm going to bed. I just I want to give myself a little more of a cushion. So let me go in and change this high a level to 200, and I'm gonna leave that on. And then I'm going to go to scheduling down here. So scheduling I can turn on. I want this to be every day of the week. Next, and I'm gonna have it start at around bedtime, which is 10 p.m. And then. I'll have it end at 9 a.m. And then I'm set. So this, 
Now, if I go back, I've got my primary and then my nighttime. That my nighttime is going to only come on uh, at 10 p.m. every night. Now, let me dive a little deeper into the settings that you can set on these profiles. So, I'll go into my primary profile to show you this. So. Here, I've got a few things set. Let's go to my lows first. My low, I have the threshold at 70. And what I like about this is I have snooze on. So you can set it so that when you get an alert, you can acknowledge that alert and you won't get another alert for a declared amount of time. I have 15 minutes, let's just go in there. So you can do this up to, up to four hours. I like the 15 minutes, I'm gonna keep it there. That's what makes me feel comfortable, whatever. Uh, of course, the level of the low you can change. I have it set to 70. I like getting a little more advanced notice for my lows. That's a comfortable space for me. You can also change the, the audio. So you can either have it always sound, always vibrate, or based on phone settings. I have it based on phone settings. Uh, but then what I like about G7 over some of the other CGMs out there is the amount of sounds that you can put on. So there's a whole list Right now, I have it set to the G7 low medium sound, but there are there's a long list of alerts that you can play around with, and I have done that for some other ones. Now, uh, when you go into highs, highs also has that snooze delay, so I have that 15 minutes as well. Have that turned on. High alerts also introduces another feature, which is delay first alert. I love this one. Uh, I have it turned on always. So what this does is, my level for highs for me to get notified currently is 190. Now, I have it set so that I won't get the first alert letting me know that I have hit 190 or above until I've been over 190 for one hour. So that means if within one hour, I go over 190, but then drop under 190, I'll have had no alert. So yeah, I'd say that this feature is probably the biggest game changer when it comes to the Dexcom G7 and having way less alert fatigue. One last thing I wanna show you on the alerts page is the ability to set a rising or falling alert. I have these turned off. I haven't found the need for them and I'd be curious to know why you like them in the comments, but it, let's say I go into rising fast, I could turn this on, and if I'm rising, uh, there are a couple options, two to three milligrams per deciliter per minute, or three milligrams per deciliter uh, per minute with two arrows. So when my glucose levels are rising that quickly above a certain uh, level, so right now I have it set to 40, but you can have this set to something much higher, um, you'll get an alert for that. For me, I don't use these. I haven't ever felt the need to. It's very rare that I have a double arrow uh, with my treatment and, and my experience. I don't rage bolus, and I think that that could be a big factor in like getting double arrows more often. I'm not sure, but personally, I don't have those on, and, and I'm kind of fine with that. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to alerts are the other devices you're using. As you can see behind me, I have a couple devices. On top is the Sugar Pixel. That is an incredible device that was built for showing glucose readings. It also does sound alerts that are very loud in case you want that, in case you have a child or yourself, you don't wake up from alarms. This will wake you up. Uh, they're ridiculously loud. You, they're optional, I don't use them. Uh, and there's a snooze button on the top. And then also there's a vibrating puck. So if you uh, have any hearing impairments, you can use this vibrating puck and it will wake you up with vibrations. I love that. Down below it is the tidbit. Doesn't do alerts, but I thought I might as well bring it up. I have links to both of those in the description. Now, two other things I wanted to talk about were the smartwatches that I have used for alerts. And uh, they're these two. So I've got an Apple Watch here, which you may probably know. And then this is a Scan Watch 2 from Withings. Uh, there's a few different types of Scan Watches that they sell. So I, many of you know, I have taken a break from my Apple Watch for almost a year now. And I've really enjoyed not having the constant, kind of the, the alerts of life, right? Text messages, phone calls, glucose, and beyond all on my wrist. Um, but I think one major factor of me stopping wearing the Apple Watch was having my glucose readings always available to see on here through the Dexcom G7 app, right? So I'm always having my readings on my watch and able to see like where my glucose has been and 
knowledge is power, right? But it's also anxiety and I don't miss having all of that information on my watch. In fact, I'm trying really hard now uh, after over oversaturating my life with information and numbers, I'm trying to minimize it a little bit, especially when it comes to me out on the go having a lot of fun. So I haven't been wearing my Apple Watch anymore, but I highly recommend it if you are someone who not only wants those alerts, but also wants the ability to see how your glucose levels have been for the last six hours uh, or up to three hours. Now, the Scan Watch 2, this has been a game changer for me. What I love about this watch is not only how sleek it is, but it does have a bunch of health features on here, but it also gets alerts sent from your phone. Any alert that's coming on your phone will come to this. You can turn them off as well. So I have like text messages I don't get on my watch. I do get Discord messages though, because those are far and few in between and, and they're usually work related. And I also get phone calls. Why I'm talking about it is I also get my glucose level readings, specifically alerts. I don't have instant access to what my glucose level is that moment or what it's been but I get the life-saving alerts. I get the urgent low, the low, the high, all of that stuff when I need it. So it's really minimized the information that's coming in to my life, but giving me the crucial information. So I'm gonna throw a link to the scan watch in the description as well. I highly recommend it. And I'd be curious to know if any of you are already wearing it and why you like yours. Uh, but that's all I've got for you today. Please let us know any alert settings with Dexcom G7 that you like, or if you use a different CGM, what, is there something about the one you use that Dexcom can't do or something you wish it could do that Dexcom does? Uh, let us know. I'm very curious to hear more and how you're utilizing these settings. Uh, give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the podcast every Monday. I'm Justin and I'll tag you later.